Hello, in this video, I wanna walk you through a very simple use case for using smart content in your HubSpot pages. This is not a new feature, it's been in the product for years, but I just wanted to give you an example because it's one of those things that are often gets demoed, but no one actually implements. So I'm gonna give you a very simple concept just to get you thinking about ideas. At the end of the video, I'll give you some more suggestions for how you might incorporate it into yours. So this is our home page. And we have got two main images here. This is a bit of a problem statement on our homepage. Here's the problem people have. And then we talk through how we're gonna solve it for them. And then here's the solution, I'm happy. So we've got these two images, basically overwhelmed and then in control. So what we wanted to do is test using images and switching them out based on the person that was visiting. So we had two properties and we've got this little page here, which you can actually get to publicly. People wouldn't normally see this, but for, the, for this example, you can go and try it out. There, there's a form and so I've just testing here with myself and I can choose the imagery for the age group I wanna see, whether it's young, mid or experienced and also the gender that I prefer to see. I've been testing so you can see, I've set it as mid female, which is why I'm seeing here, this middle management or middle seniority age and similar here. And then, and female. So let's switch it. I'm actually going to say, let's go for an experienced guy. I'm going to update this. This will go in the background. Now, this takes a minute or so for HubSpot to do all, all its stuff. And I'm gonna walk you through that in a second, but it's updating some smart lists and then there's smart content on the page. And I'll walk you through what that looks like in a minute, but I'll just show you how that changes. So now I'll refresh. It might not have rolled out yet. Let's give it a second. No, it's still there. I'll refresh again in a second. Okay, so this is looking better. So now it's those changes have taken place and it's switched out the images. And if we actually scroll down to the bottom, this, this is supposed to be an experienced male and we're testing different images and things like that. So you can see there's various options. And of course I could go back here. I'll just refresh this. So we get the form again. We could, I can actually change it to any of those. So you can see there's a number of combinations, young, mid experience with different agendas. So we've got a whole bunch of images in the background and we just switch them out. So that's the concept. I don't want you to take this idea and think, oh, I'm going to do that with gender and age. You could be thinking, oh, I'm going to do that with persona and whether they're a VIP customer or not. It doesn't actually have to be pictures of people. It could be pictures of offers. It could actually be words. It could be the messaging that you use. That's for you to think about. I just want to give you the concept. So let me tell you how this is all working behind the scenes. If I look at my own record here, we've created these two properties here that sit on the contacts. So if I was to go over to settings, I'm in a contact settings here for contacts and properties. We've just got these two properties, custom properties that we've added. And then of course you can kind of see what the drop down is. These are the options that they could choose. And that's of course why these actually match these. Now, what do we do with those properties? Based on where they're filled out, we've got some smart lists that are created based on these. Just looks at those properties. And then we've got on our page, this is our home page. If I'm looking at it in the editing, we use clean theme. In fact, that's all we use exclusively now, Clean Theme Pro from the HubSpot Marketplace. But most themes support this. And if I look at this particular image here, actually, let me go back. I'll select this one here. And if I look at that, you can see this is the default, but we can actually switch smart content based on these rules. So we just set up rules. So for example, I think that I was at Female Experience that I showed before. We've got a different picture there as it just loads. Just give it a second and load. Yes, yeah, so that's the problem imagery. This is, I've got a problem. And then if I was to scroll down to the bottom, there's the I'm happy imagery. So you can see there's both there. 
that's very easy to do and then that's why you get that experience so summary is very easy to do summary is a few simple properties stored against a contact and you can set these in the background they power smart lists and then you use those smart lists to drive the rules or manage the rules for smart content on the page it's actually pretty simple so where would you use it would you go and do this with your home page you could that's what we're testing at the moment but I want you to think not about, oh, I'm just going to switch some images. I want you to think about your particular business. What's something that if you tailored and personalized the experience they had on the website, what do you think it would be? I'll give you one example. We're chatting with a client about they've got a range of personas for the people they deal with. They have C-suite persona. They also have an IT developer. It's a much more of a geeky technical person. And then they have someone in finance. So that's a persona. There might be gender stereotypes for those as well, but they're actually going for more of an outcome-based thinking around messaging and imagery. So that's something you can incorporate. There might be other things such as displaying offers or CTAs, maybe an ebook based on one that they haven't yet downloaded. If they're an existing customer, it might be, oh, you're a VIP customer and this goes, points you off somewhere else. Because not only is the imagery selectable, but you could actually change what that links through to. A lot of options there. Hope that all makes sense. The purpose, I'll just remind you, is just to be aware of the possibilities here. Don't think it's limited to images or how we've implemented it. Think of the idea, smart content, very powerful, very easy to manage in HubSpot. One final thing, you might be wondering, how do we actually update this on the contact? I'll tell you what we're doing. We've selected our top uh, customers and prospects, and we are manually going through setting this for each contact. Yes, it's a bit of work, but the team knows we only have to do this for a couple of contacts every day, and over the next month or so, this will all be populated out. So it's actually part of data enrichment in a way that we're manually doing. It's very manageable. Only a couple of hundred contacts are going to be in that set that we do initially. And then it means if we send them an email, they click through to the site because we've cookied them, it's matched to their contact. They will get that experience. And hopefully that imagery is just something that's a bit more relatable for them. We're guessing what they want to see based on their first name and their position. And if we know them and their relative age group, we're being a little bit presumptive in what they want to see. We're setting that and we're testing. At the end of the day, this is all about test and measure. Test an idea, see if it works. If it doesn't, throw it out. If it does, double down and improve it. Hope that's helpful. I'll see you in the next one.